All right. Welcome to Artcasters number 260. Um, and uh, we are we are joined this week with with a good friend, a re repeated guest. Um, and before we kind of get into everything, let's just uh, make the rounds and let everybody know where to find our work. So um, at, at, you're on my channel. You guys know where to find me. <laughs> um, if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. Um, also, uh, make sure to pick up a copy of Two Stories Book One from uh, from Amazon, and that's kind of that's kind of my plugs. Uh, Scott, where can everybody find you? Where you want to direct them all? Yeah, you can find me at cirkworks.com. Um, also, right now, I got some new shirts. I've got a Young and the Dead, No Zombies Allowed shirt by Popular Demand. I, I had a few people asking. I don't know how popular it is, but but I wanted to get one myself because. Uh, you know, I kind of like the logo and everything, but, um, but yeah, so we're kind of going back to, if you remember a while back when I started doing shirts on Amazon, uh, I was trying to get out of the tier 10 and tier 25. And now I'm trying to get out of tier 100. So I need to sell like, I think, I think 18 more t-shirts. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to be promoting the t-shirts for a while and there's right. this one and other ones too. And there, and right now this one in particular, this is a premium one, but there's, there's the one with the yellow and different colors. And then there's uh, like a white logo and a black logo. Um, and I just put them at like basically what it costs me. So it's, they're, they're like 1350 and Ooh. free shipping on Amazon. So, um, and I think Josh put a link to my Amazon store yeah. in the description. So they're, they're about as cheap as you're going to get a t-shirt. And like I said, if you got prime, you got free shipping. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm promoting. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. I like the, um, I like it on green, actually. I'm yeah, and like I said, there's there's other shirts up there too. There's uh, the Rocket Surgery Institute, and you know my just Cirque Works logo and all that stuff too. But the class the... creators hate creators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I love it. Um, you guys should go get that because that's that's super cheap for a t-shirt, um, and it looks great. So uh, Ken Mora is our guest. Uh, he's the writer of Caravaggio, A Light Before the Darkness. Um, he's an animator who's worked on multiple things, including Magnum Farce. And uh, now he has book two of his new series, Cage Birds, out and uh, through Marcosia. And um, also it's available to order on drive through comics. And there's a link down down there for you guys to check that out. So Ken, thank you for agreeing to come on and uh, and um, yeah, where can everybody find uh, find your work, find more of your stuff? Uh, a couple places, uh, Ken dot Mora um, uh, dot com, and then uh, Bella Fay Media uh, dot com. I love it. Either of those will take you to the same place. Uh, uh, you know, glad to have, thanks to Marcosio, you can get Caravaggio Light Before the Darkness uh, at all uh, online resellers. So, uh, so I'm happy about that and, uh, and gotten, gotten some good reviews. So things are cooking along with that. Yeah. I didn't realize you guys were like label mates. I don't know. I guess that's what they call the record in the business. <laughs> but what do they call it? What do they call it? I just publisher mates. If you're in the same publisher, is there a term for that? Uh, I don't know. Pub mates. Yeah. Pub mates. Yeah. Pub mates. Yeah. You left the pint. Yeah. Uh, that works. I mean, we've been pub yeah. mates before too. So publishers and, and we've drank at a pub before. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love it. Um, so why don't you, uh, before we kind of dip into the topic and stuff, let people give people a little hint on like what uh, caged birds is about. And what we can kind of be like, maybe a little teaser for for what people might expect in the second issue. Sure, it's a uh, a six uh, issue uh, uh, graphic novel series, so it's a serialized graphic novel, um, and it is a rather steamy Louis Mall kind of European sexy psycho melodrama uh, that's. Uh, that involves uh, uh, two women who eventually uh, uh, meet and fall in love, and then their their respective worlds fall apart. Hmm. It takes place at the turn of the uh, '60s and '70s in uh, in uh, France and Italy. That's so rad. Um, yeah, the art looks great. The the um, 
the thing I always like about your comics, Ken, is the action. Like there's there's a crazy amount of like really well developed and and really thrilling action in your stories, but they're also very like literary, and it's kind of a cool um, mix. And it's neat to see because it's it's hard to kind of find that that type of work out there. So that's yeah. Very it's also hard to sell because it's not it's really genre defying and so it's just you, you gotta you gotta re reach into other genres to describe it so uh, how, how do they how do they sell like in europe because it seems like a lot most of your books have sort of a european theme and uh, and marcos is a european publisher too right yes uh, they're based in the uk and uh uh i've had a lot of interest in um in uh, uh italy and france um and, and at my own bella Fay media um comicsology page I've, I've sold quite a few there and spain right. uh, but i i won't know the marcosia numbers until the uh, the annual uh, uh uh distribution and uh and i'm i'm trying to work with um harry to see if, if he has any numbers on on sale dates because that's one of the things we'll be talking about is yeah. that uh, as an indie publisher, you really don't know what you're doing that's working to get people to, <laughs> to look at and consider your work. Yeah. Until, until way after the fact, and then you know, the, then you're kind of like, uh, it's still it's still foggy, and and I know you know, uh, especially if you sell. Oh, are available. They're just not available. Ken, you're blipping out a little bit. Uh, oh. Can you? Sorry, can you repeat that last part? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, uh, so those figures aren't available to the author and not in a timely manner. So, so you're kind of like uh, shooting in the dark when it comes to promoting your stuff. Do Do you know if that's if that's standard throughout publishing? Because I've never I've never went the traditional publishing route, so I didn't know if that's Marcosia or if that's how most of them do it. Or, um, I, I'm guessing since we're um uh we're sort of like an indie to the next tier of publisher uh and marcosi is making some great waves because they have a great catalog uh, yeah but um you know it, it costs people to man and distribute that kind of data right i don't unless you have a, a top tier publisher i don't think there's a department um for getting that information out to to their artists yeah it's weird because i'm i'm so used to because i do a lot of digital products and and publish books you know digitally and through like amazon and stuff and i, I usually get like sales numbers sometimes even like when i publish like on kdp and i've yeah. you know, got a catalog of books they're not all uh, some of them are just notebooks and things like that but you know i sometimes i get like daily sales it's it's just so weird of course it's amazon you know um and then with the digital products usually like the different marketplaces that i'm on it's usually like once a month so it's it's uh that's something that's interesting for me to know because like with my comic you know i just i just i just do um like print on demand for now but once once i complete the story i'd like to maybe either do traditional publishing or at least do a trade and, and try to market it on you know yeah you know so that's that's good to know yeah yeah and it's also Oh, go ahead. I mean, there'll be that chasm between. I mean, because if you if you publish, print, distribute yourself, uh, the nice part is you know you know when you make a sale and you know when you need to make a trip to the post office. Uh, but if it, once it gets out of your hands, uh, there's that uh, time lag valley. It's just like uh, I get uh, Comicsology numbers, but I get them monthly and then a, a month behind. Yeah, that's yeah, that seems about what I what I was kind of expecting, but yeah, yeah, and it's it's interesting because, um, but like you know, I I did a book through um, Insight Editions like a while ago, um, and you know they they have a pretty good operation, but still in general, and I know when my wife does like kids books and stuff through through publishers, I uh, usually get it like once a year you get like your kind of report on like for royalties and that's kind of how you know <laughs> and and then the, the rest of it's kind of like a guessing game so like for me i've been kind of trying to keep track of 
um, what my Amazon rank is. But even that's a big guessing game because that number is all over the place and kind of reliant on reviews. And so it's hard to tell what the actual numbers are. So it is interesting, like this whole kind of flying blind and sort of um, like you want to be able to try like a spaghetti at the wall technique where you see what, what kind of works and what sticks. But it's like a lot of the time you're just like, I don't know what stuck, but I'm going to just kind of have to keep scatter shot like marketing. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. Josh, so I know I know with like KDP, um, I know there's like third party software and stuff and um, websites and things like that 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 track because Amazon's just kind of weird with what information they give you and like how to figure all that out. Like yeah. I know when I advertise on Amazon, the way you figure out whether you're you're actually making any money on the money you're spending on advertising, it's confusing, but there's websites that like, oh no, this is it figures it out for you. So I don't know if that would be the, if there's anything like that for for book publishing that could take and say, Oh, here's your ranking on the average. This is probably how many you're selling. I don't know. It's so possible. There might be something like that out there. Yeah. I mean, there's one I saw online that, you know, is like a calculator and you kind of put in your yeah. sales rank and it goes, you're selling this many copies a day or whatever, right. but it's yeah. so it, yeah. and I can send me that link. I would, I would love <laughs> yeah. to Yeah. Yeah. So. I will, but it's still even from that hard to tell. And then you're still only seeing your rate on Amazon. You're not really seeing like Barnes and Noble and um, all the different other sites that might be carrying your your work. And so it's like, it's still kind of a guessing game, um, which is interesting because it's hard to, you know, in order to do effective marketing, you, you, you kind of need to know. <laughs> yeah. And even those third party things, it's a guessing game too. I mean, it's an educated guess, but Amazon doesn't share that kind of information with anyone. So, but I've had people that say, okay, so I went to this website and I know how many I've sold um, and it matches up with what they're saying. So they said that it was pretty accurate, but that's, you know, I don't know if that huh. works the same with traditionally published books. Yeah. I mean, the downside that and, and Ken can probably speak more to this, but it's like the downside that I've seen is that, you know, if you're not the publisher yourself, like, like if it were your own Amazon page, then you can actually put, um, like th there are tracking software things where you can put just like a little bit of code and you can see what's, what's happening with your book. And I think for in particular, like if it's your own book, Amazon even offers that, I think. Um, but you, you have to be the publisher and so uh, that's the whole loophole there with where it's like, it, if you're not actually the publisher of it, it's, it becomes kind of a, um, a guessing game, but I don't know. Ken, have you had any, <laughs> any no, idea? I, I could, you know, I, I would love to talk to like, uh, Rob Anderson, who, who really had a great, uh, following with uh, geek girl. And yeah, then went over to Marcosia, and then I'd like to see what his comparison is between you know before and after. Uh, so, uh, uh, but you know, uh, I guess uh, uh, after I get my first uh, annual report, I guess I'll I'll see uh, what was working. I just don't know if, uh, and I, I keep track of the campaigns I have. You know, Twitter versus uh, Google, uh, and uh, so I'll be able to, to look back and see what you know, hopefully what things corresponded, but uh, it's hard hard to keep track of. And uh, I don't know if you tried Google um, AdWords or AdSense, but it is just horribly obtuse. I mean, if you have a business degree, maybe uh, you, can, you can figure out what metrics they're talking about. But you know what? What I need to know is just like, uh, how many people are in my site and how many people click through to the link on my book. Yeah. You know, so I really don't need a lot that's complicated. <laughs> yeah. And I can extrapolate from that what percentage of people that, you know, might, might have actually purchased the book uh, until I get sales figures, but um, just the uh, amount of technical uh, and, and, the, and, and they try to walk you through it. And I say, you know, just, I just need this, you know, who yeah. the site and who and who clicks through you know how many <laughs> uh and and you have all those other data is about you know uh, uh you know, all that demographic data that that's fine but you know it's, it's way more than i need you know. 
uh, having all that is great, but uh, we're not, you know, it doesn't do me any good. Yeah, I it's uh, so I have a buddy who works at um, Oculus who, uh, when when people work at like Facebook, they get like a certain stipend every year or month for like advertising, uh -huh. and so he kind of did a, a run on Facebook, like some Facebook ad ads for me, complimentary, which is cool. But um, I just saw how quickly, <laughs> like, were that not, it was kind of play money at that point for him because it was like, it's just credits he's not going to use, you know? Yeah. Um, but just how quickly that, that accumulated into just hundreds. And with like, you know, and, and, you know, from what I was hearing, it's like in order to get it accurate, you have to kind of get a lot of statistics, like run it for a week and then kind of see from there and kind of fine tune it. And I was like, it, it's just, it would be really easy to just burn through a crap load of money with no idea <laughs> as to whether, um, whether it's working or not, you know, which is. Absolutely. And I have to wonder if that obscurity isn't, uh part of the marketing sales because it's just like, uh, you know, that they'll tell you, know, that you have this many, uh, what do they call it? Exposures or yeah. Or, like views, you know, yeah, yeah. this many views, this many engagements. I don't know what an engagement is. And then, uh, uh, in, and then, uh, it's not necessarily a click. So some fraction of that is people who actually click on the visit your shop or whatever. Uh, uh, Oh, I think, Dan, I think you froze again. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. I think you're back. Am I back? Yeah. yeah. So it seems when it freezes, it, it does, it's not for long usually. So, yeah. In my experience, and maybe other people have, um, you know, uh, uh, figured it out, but uh, the Facebook ads uh, are absolutely useless. Uh, yeah, it seemed like it. And, and I think. Uh, Twitter actually uh, got me more engagements, but um, uh, I mean, uh, more, what do they call it? Interactions. But how many of those were actually clicks on, on my link rather than just clicks on the, to expand the, uh, the ad? I'm not sure. Okay. I should look into AdSense. I'm going to write that down because I, I used to use that back back in the day, and I haven't used it in a in a while. And uh, I'd be curious to kind of see, but I do wish the metrics were easier. Um, it doesn't seem as intuitive <laughs> as it could be. Yeah. Um, and I know Scott, like you run ads, right, for products and stuff. Um, just for just my KDP books. Um, I, there, there's a few that I run ads and it will, it'll, you know, it, it shows how much you spend and, you know, you can get, it usually does it by the week. It'll show you how much you spent in the last week. It'll show you how, um, it's got like a advertising cost of sale, which is kind of hard to figure out, but they, I think they changed that to some other metric that I'm, I'm going to try to figure out. But, um, but more or less there's like a percent. I know when they, before it was the advertising cost of sale, there'd be a percentage. Like if I think it was like 30, if you're under 30, then you're not losing money. Um, if you're over, it, it's a percentage. But, um, but the thing, but like sometimes at least the kind of books that I'm doing, sometimes it, it in the beginning, cause I made the mistake cause I was advertising a book and it was, I was losing a little bit of money. So I shut it off. But, what I didn't realize was that sometimes it, it makes sense to sell to even if you are losing a little money in the beginning because sales beget sales and the more something does sale, yeah. the more it'll continue to sell by itself, at least on Amazon, you know, because it goes up in the in the book ranking and the more that does it, more, more Amazon will naturally push it and the more it shows up like with your key different keyword searches and everything. So it's it's and I'm I'm just trying to I'm just starting to try to figure all this stuff out, you know. But, you know, and like I said, they have changed it around. There's a new, there's, they don't, I guess they're not using the advertising cost of sale, the A cost anymore. They're using something else. So I can not figure out what that means, but I, it's all very, you know, I don't know. It's, it's confusing and it takes a little while, but it and seems Scott, like the people that know it, know how to do it, they're, they're the ones making all the money. So, I mean, it's just, you got to figure that out, you know. Are, are you doing the advertising through 
uh, AdSense or through? Um, so basically, they're basically what they are is their um, uh, what do they call them? Um, I'm trying to there's a term for them. I can't remember the term, but basically, uh, so if if somebody does a search, say I've so I've got a book that's uh, it's a coloring book and it's like inspirational. Yeah, um, it, it's an inspirational coloring book for for boys and then another one for girls. So if somebody types in inspirational coloring book for boys and I have an ad on that, it'll kind of show up higher and it'll say sponsor sponsored ad. That's what they're called. So it's a sponsored ad. It'll show up higher, and then you know if, if somebody clicks on it then that's where that's where i get charged so if they okay. click on it then hopefully they buy it if they don't then that's when you know it starts it, it starts costing <laughs> more money you know if, if no one's if people are clicking and not buying but that also tells you something if people are clicking on it and not buying it then maybe there's something wrong there but so question um, can you do a sponsored ad like that if you're not the publisher i, I think oh um that's a good question. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I th I don't think it's I don't think it's limited to just KDP. I could be wrong. Okay. And if and KDP is Kindle Direct Publishing, which is their sort of print on demand, where they you know, as soon as somebody you know, there's no warehouse of books. If somebody orders one, they got machines that print it out and then they ship it out and everything on demand. Okay. So, hmm. sorry, just curious because um, I'm always open to different techniques. but it helps i mean i'm i mean i've got one book like my my main uh like comic book template book that's my best seller right now and it's a pretty it's a pretty heavy like there's a lot of competition but you know one thing is you know my i think my book is better because most of the people that have those books out there aren't comic book artists um, and they don't really look that good, <laughs> but it's still, it's still, I mean, there's some people like making, I mean, I think the top one in that, in that particular niche is making like $10,000 a month. <laughs> so it's, uh, but so I, hopefully, you know, I, my hope is that through time people start to see it a little more and mm -hmm. it's uh, obviously it's better than the competition. So hopefully it'll just keep going up and everything. But like right now I'm selling, even though I'm still running ads on that, I sell more with just people finding it, finding it throughout the ads. So that, that one is profitable. Um, and then some of the other ones, like I've got like the gross food book and the, I have one that's like Yo Mama Joke coloring book. And I thought those would be, yeah, I never know it's going to be a good seller, but those, you know, so far I haven't sold too many running ads on them. So it just depends, you know, hmm. it's weird. Yeah, it's hard to track too. So, so Kim, like, have you found any that like particularly work for you? You're using AdSense. Um, like, what what other kinds of methods like are working for you, or or are leaving just you? Before it went away, so there's no useful information. But just before you went away, there were, I, I discovered this banner exchange site where you have you know different side or square banners or whatever and, and you bid for space on on people's pages who do things similar to yours and and that was getting me when i was you know before nobody when i was at single issues with the caravaggio uh, book um that was working really well and they then they folded and uh Hmm. That's interesting because there, I mean, that used to be the pretty much the model back with web comics and things yeah. like that. And I, I wasn't sure how much of that's around because you don't, I know I don't see that so much on webs. Well, I guess I do, you do see sponsored or those kind of banner ads a little bit here and there, but I don't, it seems like I don't see them as much anymore. But yeah, I remember that site too. What was that called? The Is World that Wonder or something? Yes. Wonder? Yeah. Something Wonder. Yeah. Project Wonderful. That was Project it. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I used to put ads and, back and in the, the And the metrics were fantastic. I mean, yes. and, and you could look them up and you could understand them. <laughs> <laughs> so it was destined to die. Yeah, it's it's almost like a um like we're we're actually given almost like too much information unless we're like a giant marketing firm and we need all the statistics and bullet points to analyze. It's like I just need to know <laughs> click sales like that's all I need to know. <laughs> wow. Um, 
Yeah, that's a challenge. Um, and then, so marketing indie books is kind of a different game in this era too, right? Where it's like, I mean. Yeah, you know, and, and also uh, I try, you know, I, I, I'm I always trying to think, look around the corner and, and kick the tires and stuff. Uh, and so for my Caravaggio book, uh, I looked at other Marcosia uh, people who are doing historical uh, novels and I said, uh, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to put a, a, a page ad because I needed to preserve the, the page flips on the graphic novel version. Mm -hmm. I needed uh, pages. And I figured, well, I could advertise my stuff. And I, and I did a couple times. Uh, but I will. I could also advertise other people who are doing the same type of thing, uh, Caravaggio being the historical genre. Um, but there was a, a resounding... Uh, lack of any echo i was just shout, shouting yeah so, I, I, I gave I, a couple I, people free ads <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah i was always curious how those ads if those ads are successful or not you know i would think because if if i read a graphic novel uh in a genre that's not typical and then i see a, an ad for something similar typically it's it's by the same author or same creator team um then i'll i'll be encouraged to look at that but uh as long as I'm there, uh, I, I'm more open to uh, suggesting if I'm having a good time reading what I'm reading. It's it seems like ads that aren't clickable, like a like an actual printed ad. <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to get it's hard to get that um, conversion, I guess, because somebody's actually got to go and type it in. Unless you know, I, I'm sure there's a, a small percentage of you know people that um, you know. I mean, if it's a similar book and they like that book. And they're like, oh, oh, this looks interesting. But yeah, I'm curious. I was always, I've always been curious how how well those ads work. And and so I'm curious. So when you run a book through a publisher like Marcosia, if you run ads in there, do, do you get any benefit? Do you get any benefit to that, uh, is, or is the publisher getting that that ad money? Uh, no. In fact, I think he was a little little shocked at at, at the idea because I don't think anyone's put it forward to him. Uh, Okay. Uh, but I said, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and advertise a couple of your books uh, of, in, in the genre from, from the Marcosia family. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you hear that uh, it's any, uh, any uh, positive response, uh, let me know. And then they have a Facebook site for Marcosia creators. Mm -hmm. And then I put, I ran the suggestion of the flagpole, but, uh, uh, it, it seems it seems to me a natural networking idea, but uh, but nobody's nobody's uh, cottoned on to it. So. Hmm. Hmm. so do they do they typically not run it? Because I know I have Josh's book, and I know there's no ads in his book. Is that is do they typically not run ads in any of their books, or is that just per... uh, 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 Harry, Harry is open to you putting ads in in your books as long as they're not um, competing with. Right, got it. Like as long as it's not like for a different publisher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, if if you've got another uh, book, so uh, in the Caravaggio thing, I put a couple of teasers up for Cage Birds, um, uh, in addition to those other uh, uh, Marcosia titles, uh, and and he's fine with it uh, as long uh, as long as what you deliver to him is camera ready, he'll he'll be, and it doesn't you know. It doesn't yeah. shoot him in the foot. Uh, he's open to, to having things in there. That's smart. I, I actually think that could potentially work. I do remember picking up comics like when I was younger, specifically because the ad in the comic yeah. was so good that I was like, and it was similar. So like very, very, I think even that might have been how I found out about Bone back in the day. Oh. Because it was like, I think it was an ad in another comic where it was like, this just looks cool. What is this? And then, and then I remember, I think Wizard or something. This is back when there was Wizard, but they like ran a little thing on Jeff Smith. And I was like, I got to check this guy out. Um, yeah. But it's like, you know, I, I think sometimes organic marketing like that can be effective, you know? Yeah, and, and I was impressed with a, a few of the historical titles they have there. Like they've got a a, a version of Beowulf. Uh, they've got um, uh, one called Heirs of Rome, which I enjoyed. A particularly 
politically astute and intriguing one called, uh, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce it in Gaelic, but it sounds like it's pronounced Boudica, uh, about a, uh, a Gaelic queen at the time of, uh, of uh, the collapse of uh, Hadrian's reach into uh, England. And uh, it's it's just like rich with research and 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 uh, cultural uh, things which which I didn't know and, uh, and infighting among the uh, the Celts and uh, so it, fascinating stuff. So uh, whenever whenever I'm reading something in the genre and I see an ad for something else, you know, I'll, I'll check it out at least. No, it makes perfect sense. Um, I yeah, I mean they have they have quite a quite a few good titles. Um, and and like I I was I even the I'm like kind of really interested in picking up the Alistair Crowley <laughs> book because I'm like it just looks fascinating and and the art looks really cool. So um, there's yeah there's a lot of like really just fascinating titles they're carrying. Um, can't wait to kind of dip in more um at some point so so like with with not being able to track books it is kind of a guessing game that's tough um how are you like because traditionally with like indie books like right like the first thing you're gonna do is hit every local comic shop and bookstore you know, and bring in a pile of books <laughs> and and say like, can you carry five of these or whatever? And um and you know usually they have like a system where either they're gonna take it um I'm forgetting the term but it's like they'll they'll sign it on the list and then if it sells consignment consignment thank you um, or they'll just pay for it outright and yet it's like that that um that's off the table right now fairly off the table because yeah. like stores aren't even open <laughs> and then no, most bookstores aren't going to take a gamble on yeah, a. Well, you know, that was one great thing about uh, Pulp Fiction and Culver City is uh, yeah. uh, I went there and, uh, and I showed her the book and, uh, and she go, sure. I'll carry a couple. So something, okay, well, you know, uh, uh, want me to take a look at your assignment agreement? And she goes, no, no how much do you want? And so I told her the cover price, and she she bought two uh, for for a half price, and then uh, and that was great. So I got my money up front. So next next to uh, Kickstarter, that was <laughs> yeah, that was you know just like boom up front make a sale. And you know uh, of course I uh, I published this year, so I haven't been able to table with it. Yeah, so I had been really looking forward to. To tabling at like WinterCon and, and Comic Con and 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 you know uh, traveling the East Coast uh, shows, uh, seeing if I can get to New York. But uh, you know that's all that's uh, done for this foreseeable future. Yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting to try to figure out new ways to navigate that kind of thing because that's like that's one of the traditional routes where you can kind of compete. A little bit with the bigger publishers because it's like you know you, even when somebody has a bigger publisher it doesn't mean their marketing department or is going to have the time to like hand visit stores and yeah. booth at every convention and stuff so it's like by doing that you're like kind of allowing the potential of of, of like generating more media getting more fans and like kind of promoting your work trying to find like a um a method now is is fascinating um i've been lately trying to kind of hit podcasts um wow. and that's kind of one of my interests so i'm going to try to see if that works <laughs> um and then just but but the other juggle and ken i'm kind of curious how you handle this because you have cage birds 2 out so you need to hustle and promote that um then you have cage birds one which you still need to promote um even though you know it's out but it's like it helps to promote and then you're promoting caravaggio yeah. um so like amid all this promoting like when do you get time to work <laughs> you on the writing well you know uh uh maybe uh maybe it's the covid but i've kind of like drawn in and so i'm not really as as promoted promoting as actively as i should yeah, 
I, I remember I remember to uh, to go out and post uh, here and there or on my Facebook page if uh, uh, a news article on on Caravaggio comes up, I'll post that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know that I've scaled that way back, and also you know uh, as I mentioned uh, my last time I made the uh, unwise choice to proceed with four uh, serialized graphic novels at once, and so. I have no shortage of, of time not yeah. to <laughs> so uh, 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 right now I'm just trying to uh, get Cage Birds 3 out there and then assemble um, uh, uh, my the, the comic uh, book version of Magnum Farce and then um, and, and my, my Ms. Valkyrie which is a dysfunctional uh, uh, um, a dysfunctional future uh, 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 thriller series. So, uh, you know, it's it kind of giving me the excuse to not push as, as much as, as I should be doing normally uh, at normal times. Uh, I am, however, uh, running a, a Kickstarter for Cage Birds for on... Uh, uh, which I hope to start on uh, Valentine's Day. Oh, so nice! It's kind of a, a twisted romance of a sort. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So um, you'll have to let us know uh, when that is, so we can help you. You know. Uh, yeah. Sure. If, if anyone wants to, uh, uh, I I don't, and I should do more emails. Uh, I only do an email when I have something actually happening. Oh. Ken froze again. Scott, I don't know if your mic is next to what you're drawing, but oh, the <laughs> <over there>. Sorry. <laughs> it's like hearing this, like yeah, I'm I'm color I'm coloring, so I'm tapping on my Cintiq. So no worries. let me know if it let me know if it, you can still hear it. I'll try I'll try to. I think you're good. I can, I can do it softer too. I just kind of like I'm just kind of like, bam, 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 bam. but I can I can do it softer. I don't have to. Got it. Um, Ken, yeah. sorry, you froze for a second, so you were just going to yeah. mention, like, uh, you know. So, yeah, at bellafamedia.com or at kenmora.com, um, you can uh, sign up for my newsletter, and right. I don't uh, I don't abuse it, uh, but when I have a Kickstarter or something, I'll, I'll give you a heads up, and uh, and then, uh, you know, even uh, uh, send previews out since I've got, since I've worked on issue uh, um uh, for uh, funding for uh, if someone, if someone emails me directly, yeah, I'll send you issue one to check out. Nice, it's awesome. I think um, it's worth it's worth checking out, and uh, and I also think it's it's cool that you're juggling so many books. It's funny because I uh, just, I mean, as you know, like I just put out my first graphic novel. And, and I'm in really the, happy with it too. It came out really well. Yeah, I was I was pretty stoked. Um, but I'm uh, I'm knee deep in the second, <laughs> so <laughs> I relate because I, in theory, should be sending out like press releases every day, and that's that was that was initially my goal, and I was okay with doing that for about a week, and juggling that with working, and then I just fell out of it. So I need to. Um, I mean, I've been finding that doing the push during the weekends can kind of work for me because there's there's a little more of a window of time. But um, but it is a hard juggle uh, that I find like trying to promote and develop the work. Like it's it's um, it, it's interesting and it's 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 a uh, it's kind of a bummer because it's like almost like if I just did. And I th I'm sure, Ken, you have this thought, too, where you're like, if you just did Caravaggio, right, and that was it, like, that's all you had to promote. Um, in a weird way, it's like you could probably push even more sales for that book. But it's like, but there's so many books <laughs> that we, we all want to make. Yeah, um, yeah. And I know Scott relates to that, too, because it's like we, we've... we've um, well, Scott's done a lot of books, so yeah. Well, but not a lot of comics. It's, it's as much as I talk about comics. I mean, I really only have the one title, and it takes me forever to do it. The other books that I publish are like coloring books and things like that. So, but I am finally getting back to doing my comic, and it, it actually feels great. So, 
But yeah. I was going to say, Josh, you should do uh, 100 days of marketing your comic book. <laughs> spend an hour, spend 30 minutes to an hour a day marketing every day and just make a goal of it. Cause it's hard, man. I don't, I, I, I don't want to be marketing. I want to be creating, but, but it's, but it's, you got to, you know, it's totally. Like, yeah. And the frustrating part is I'm in a hole where I literally, I have to get the second book done. Um, but I definitely have to market. And so, uh, yeah, there's there's just got to be a better way to kind of navigate that. But so far, I haven't found it <laughs> where I'm, you know, the multi juggling thing. It's just. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, but I do think it's important because it's like we we have good books. And so I think it's important to push uh, push that those out there so people can check them out and read them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm on the one on the one hand. uh this sort of golden age of indie publishing lets us all get our stuff out there. On the other hand, uh, Excuse me. separate our signal from the noise and find our audience. That's uh, an extra challenge. Hmm. Corey said Josh's first graphic novel, he knows the dark secret. I, I have another finished <laughs> graphic novel in my back pocket um, that I might like depending on how long it takes this one to get done, I might try to sneak that one to Harry. <laughs> like, like, and it, you know, if a year from the first publication date, I don't have this done, I'd like to have something out. Um, and so I have another one that I'm sitting on. The only downside is it's full color interiors. And I think that might be problematic. <laughs> your, your books are full color, aren't they, Ken? Oh, uh, he froze. He froze. <laughs> Hang on. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There yes, uh, my books are, are my books are full color. Um, you know, I I just again had I known what the expense would be doing for it, you know, but when you know when, when you're excited about things, you jump in with both feet. You know. Yeah. 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 I think they're they're beautiful books though so i think um that works but it's like i just i know and if i'm going to push a full color it's a harder sell um for me to a publisher than, than a black and white do they yeah. do they need to be is it, you're talking is it uh jacob's apartment is that the one yeah, yeah, yeah. does it need to be full color do you have black and white line art or is that too much to go back and i mean i i don't think it's a black and white book okay that's, that's what i'm asking yeah um, yeah but um and it's not as strong of a book but it is a decent book it's just not you know i don't think to the level of the other one but i well, but still if a year I, from I like what you what you did with the uh, the two color on uh, on, yeah. on two stories so yeah i wouldn't mind uh rocking that either that might be kind of fun and, and it worked for parker i mean that that was a that was a good series and like each series had its own theme color so I like it. Yeah, I I think because uh, I do like the idea of having like more than more than one book out there. You know, <laughs> at at some point it'd be fun. Um, Do, does Marcosia only publish, or maybe you already? I don't know what the deal is like with the uh, with like Numb. I know it's like more of a. It's not a full graphic novel, but do they publish? You know, smaller books too, or is that? I don't know what kind of arrangement you have with whoever published it the first time or Oh with Nam I, well I published it first. Yeah, with the with the grant, right? Yeah. I mean with that book I'd rather push through the you know second printing that's in my garage. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I <didn't. laughs> Before I go and get another publisher Got for it. it. But it. I feel like um I need to burn through some of those copies. I think that book will actually be very helpful when if I should say, if things open again to the point where we can have conventions and yeah, yeah. Uh, and do that safely and not risk like you know catching a deadly pandemic, um, <laughs> um, but like you know if that ever happens, it'll be really useful to have those books kind of as books that I can both trade because that happens a lot at conventions too, where people trade and. Um, you know, when you're working with a publisher, it's like you can't necessarily trade the books because you're kind of vested in those books a little bit um, when you buy them. <laughs> and then um, 
so you want to at least hopefully make what you spent, you know, selling them. Um, and then, but having just that extra back stock of floppies, like, won't, I don't think be bad for that or for like going to stores and making exchanges where it could be like, you know, if you buy this book, you can also have three of these for free. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, but, but yeah, I do like the idea of, of, um eventually doing that i don't know i think i have a feeling that might work because harry's so kind of he's pretty flexible with with stuff so he might go for that but um yeah i i still think i i can you always astound me the amount of things you are juggling the amount of projects and stuff because even with caravaggio it's like you were working on three other graphic novels and also working on some uh, Bill Plimpton stuff. <laughs> like just, just crazy multitasking. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah. And then I'm, I'm also uh, doing a surreal, surreal animated film, which right now is just pencil tests on graph paper, graph paper. But you know, um, if I'm not, if I'm not, uh, beating my head against the wall against something, uh, then, then uh, I'm not happy. So. And you can only do so, mu so much Sudoku. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that, though, because I, th I do think um, one of the things during this, this whole thing with the shutdown and stuff, it's like, I think creatives, we're a little fortunate in this, especially those of us who do cartooning or writing um we're animating where it's like a lot of these are very solitary activities <laughs> and so we're all pretty used to um you know like long periods of time where we're working on our projects and stuff so it's it's interesting um my non-creative art friends who i, I mean non-art friends who um who you know during this whole thing have been like, I just don't know what to do around the house. And I'm like, I just have no time still. Cause I, That's I still right. have. We, we pioneered the COVID lifestyle before. Exactly. Uh, we're old school shut-ins. Like we were shut in before there was a shutdown. So, um, but I do think like when uh, that, that is one nice thing during all this crazy upheaval and stuff that's going on. It's nice to be able to kind of retreat into the work and like just kind of know that you're actually making something rather than just consuming it. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Certainly. And, uh, yeah. And I enjoy seeing your, you got like, it seems like you thumbnail a page every day, right? I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, it's, it doesn't always hit. Um, I finally just allowed myself uh, the ability to just, if I get like halfway through a page, I'll post that. Um, but as long as I'm making progress, but it's it's tough, man. Um, I'm excited though. The script's done, and it's you know I'm a little over halfway of like thumbnailing the whole thing. So I just wish it would go faster. And I I, I know that's just most of us in this field wish it would take less time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it takes all our time, but. Uh... Yeah. Two morning would be nice. So, um, so with Page Birds out, um, so you're you're working on three and four, and then you have the other two in the back burner. Are those going to be released like kind of simultaneously, or? Uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I have a great uh, uh, colorist, and uh, I'm sort of the hold up in the Cage Birds pipeline now with. Uh, with issue six, since I'm making a, a change to the story, which is something I, I, I try not I try not to do, uh, but it just you know seemed like it needed it. So uh, uh, I will probably um, uh, I'll fundraise for issue four, uh, selling uh, one through three uh, as part of the fundraiser, and then uh, I will uh, the fundraiser for five, and then, and then pro I'll probably have a uh, separate ones for four, five, and six, and uh, and hopefully still uh, I'm trying to uh, to get it all together for in the graphic novel format for uh, publication probably early next year. Man, 
I'm excited about that. That's that's crazy. Ken, you're going to have like the next by the next time we have you on, you'll have like four books out. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know, I know about that. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, next time uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I actually have uh, two issues worth of the, the Magna Farce uh, series together, which I have to letter. And then um, and then finally, I think I'm going to wrap it up with Ms. Valkyrie, which is a, uh, a dystopian future one. Uh, and that's, well, I'm about uh, one pay, one issue colored on that and about uh, uh, working on issue five uh, pencils. Dude, I need to um, see some sneak previews of this, but at, at some point. Um, I, I'm actually really excited about Magnum Farce as a comic too because I I have wanted to see I like I've seen uh, quite a bit of the animation but I, I don't know if I've seen the pages like a, as a comic and I think that's cool because you can make a lot of progress on the story um, yeah you know and uh, and uh, it's a way for me to kind of vent because it's like I have all the voices for the animated feature and the can uh, with, you know, I've got like Tom Kenny and Larry Hankin and, uh, and stuff like that. But uh, that was back in the, in, in the day when I was actually getting some traction on making the, the feature. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if, if, if only the graphic novel gets made, I'll be happy with that. And if that, it becomes something I can, uh, I can use to pitch the movie. That'd be great. But uh, I'm 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 really happy with the the graphic novels and and keeping uh, animation to my film my filmmaking to animation right now. Yeah, and I think that's smart. Um, it's also it's not a bad idea. I mean, people are always, uh, you know, looking for graphic novels as film pitches um, nowadays, <laughs> and so I think that's that's not a bad uh, result. And the nice thing about Graphic novels is on their own. They're such a great medium anyway that um, that film it yeah. can, can just be like a secondary ancillary thing. So I think that's great. I'm excited, man. Um, I'm excited about uh, about the book and and all of that. I, I so from what you're able to track, like, do you have have you found any sort of um, reliable stat like reliable stats other than just kind of what what they can you know the publisher provides <laughs> you know you no know, when i when i when i get stuff in from comiXology um uh, uh you know it's it's a surprise you know i said oh you know i, I sold i sold three in france this month that's that's great that's, <laughs> i don't market to france so that was nice but the, <laughs> but um, uh, and as far as the the publishing going, I I think it, uh, I get the feeling it's selling for pretty well, but uh, it's it's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very strange strange thing. So uh, if anybody's listening to this or watching this, and you guys know of really effective ways to kind of track book sales, um, let us know because I'm I'm kind of curious uh, to hear what's out there. Scott, I also want you to send me whatever uh, site you were talking about because I'd be curious to check that out too. Yeah, I, unfortunately, I don't know. I think it might be specific to KDP, um, but I can I can look into it. Okay. Let's see. Um, and I I, I also um, I enjoyed this discussion too because it also reminds me um, that how important it is to advertise and to promote your work. It's just. It's a crazy thing that um, that's like half the hustle of writing. <laughs> and uh, and I think it's like, I, I think most writers dislike it. I, I remember reading, I think a blog by Neil Gaiman um, where he was venting about uh, having to promote his books. Um, and I was like, if Neil Gaiman has to, that before, before I ended up in this scenario myself, it's like, I, I was gearing up for it and I was trying to psych myself out to do more promotion. Cause it was like, if Neil Gaiman has to promote like hell, I should have to promote like hell. Cause he's easily, you know, he's famous and a fairly, um, I mean, an amazing writer and, and hardly anyone can test that, especially in comics. Um, and if he's having a hustle, I, I, I figure I probably got to hustle. Cause I'm, you know, like, yeah. 
but uh but it's still hard to um it's hard to find that that kind of interesting balance um yeah i uh, um i am curious ken so like right now you're you're do you when you're working on these multiple books like do you sort of target one in particular first um yeah i, I have a front burner project that one's cage birds for now yeah and uh, uh got a i owe my artist pages next week on the revisions that i'm doing to the last uh, uh page and then i have to go over the colors for for issue five then i have to go to the, the wonderful chore of lettering and so uh, that's uh, another uh, another challenge uh, so but you know it's a, there are a lot of steps and so i try not to think about you know steps that i'm not on at the moment because otherwise you, you get bogged down yeah i <clears throat> i think at most you can kind of back plan and then you just kind of have to trust when you're in, <laughs> in the thick of it like there was a plan i'm getting there i'm carving away um i kind of have have been joking lately um because i i was on a couple writing like writers podcasts that are usually gen generally like deal with like novels and um and so they were asking about the process of writing a graphic novel and like what's the difference and i was like well okay so imagine a novel where the amount of time it takes you to write a sentence it takes you a week to create like that sentence <laughs> and there you go like that's that's making comic where it's like you're you're just slowing down the process and i i was yeah um i i what mystifies me um too ken is you picked that process and then you also pick animation um which are both like these these processes where it takes like a turtle's pace to to get any progress you know it's crazy but it's fun yeah what the fuck <laughs> It is beautiful to see them though when when things start moving and when when you actually um, start seeing it all kind of come together. Um, I'm excited too because it's like I remember a, a, quite a while ago. Um, I think when you and I first met, Ken, you were kind of carving at Caravaggio, and now it's like it's it's this completed work, and you're you're well into your second. It's very exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is a happy thing, and I have to rem remind myself occasionally when things seem like they're slogging along. It's just like, hey, I've got, I've got one out there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things where I think when you're in the thick of, uh, of things, um, like Scott was talking, <laughs> it has been putting out just like nonstop like KDP books, and I think it was like at the beginning of the year where Scott, you were saying something about like needing to up your productivity on it or something, and I was like. I think Corey and I were on there and we were just like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> you know, like 20 books. Um, and, yeah, and I published, uh, my goal for the month uh, is 50, published 50 books. I've published, and I, I think I published over that this month. So <laughs> I met that goal. But again, some of them are just, you know, some of them are just like notebooks with, with graphic covers on them. Some of them are coloring books. Some of them are like comic book templates. I mean, I do a number of different things. Some of them are like log books and things like that. So they're not all, and they're not all as creative, but you know. It's, it's pretty impressive, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. So the go, I mean, and some, and they don't all sell. It's kind of a numbers game. So luckily the ones, most of the ones I spend most time on, like the coloring books, they sell a little better, so. Yeah, but there's a few color books I spent a dis decent amount of time on. And they really haven't sold, so it's like <laughs> you never know. Of course, this is all I'm not really other than the some of the paid ads I'm putting on some of them. Most of them are just being found by keyword search alone, so I'm not really marketing those. I mean, if I picked if I picked a particular book, with some of them I might. I really need to. Uh, Ken, have you ever done any? And I don't know. Depending on depending on the the type of book you're publishing um i wonder if you've done if you've tried anything on pinterest um because people are tend to be on pinterest to shop and since like with my books that i publish a lot of the the log books and all those kind of coloring books they're very niche so if i do like a dog coloring book for pugs or something you can put it on instagram or not instagram but patreon i keep 
I get it on my social um, <laughs> Pinterest. You can put it, you know, put something on Pinterest, and the people who are searching for pugs or whatever, they may find that. And then a lot of people that are on that website are actually looking to maybe purchase things because you know they're looking for gift ideas or whatever. So, but I don't know if you've looked into that. That's interesting. I mean, I use uh, Pinterest to kind of like collect cool art when I see yeah. it on the web and stuff like that. But I haven't really used it uh, to market. But that's yeah. an interesting idea. So, um, yeah, I need to I need to dive into it and kind of see how well it works. But um, but I've heard some people that have success had had success with it. So hmm. I um. I have had art on Pinterest, but I've never, I don't think I've ever entertained like having a Pinterest and I think it's a good idea. Um, oh, I, I love, I mean, I love it for, like Ken said, for, uh, you know, reference and just, it's just but, so easy. Like when I'm working on a book, if I, you know, like with Young and the Dead, you can make certain boards private. So like with Young and the Dead, like I've got a Young and the Dead board where it's got like just pictures of old bikes that the kids can ride and just all everything I need for reference. And it's all right there. Yeah. It's just so easy because I've got a in Google Chrome, I've got like a little Pinterest thing. I, I can hover over any picture and I can pin that to one of my boards. And so it's just a good way to collect, you know, reference material and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I actually have one um for my work like because it's really helpful for mm -hmm. art direction where it's like if oh, you're yeah. trying to you know build like build new boards or yeah, i need stuff to look like the 1940s nps posters it's like boom there they all are mm -hmm. um but it's uh but i never thought of like utilizing it in a marketing sense and i think that's pretty smart um yeah it's it, it's interesting that there's sort of a lot of options and opportunities to kind of, kind of, kind of push uh, indie books, and I'm always fascinated, and I'm always also really um, encouraged too, just by our community and like the people we know too, because that's going to help as well with with marketing. But um, Gary uh, Hodges, who just um, commented, also has like brilliant uh, graphic novels too. Um, dinosaurs versus mars bots there it's it's a silly premise um and he does it with like the utmost seriousness and it's like this tense like um i, I i'm trying to kind of recruit him to to pitch to our publisher again because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah i mean it's stuff. yeah and i mean it's basically i i would say it's like x files meets pulp fiction that's yeah kind of, you know i think gary kind of uses that too Oh, so I'm I'm already sold. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, oh, that's great. I got probably. I don't know if I got one here. I do. You guys keep talking. I don't know if I have one here or not. I think but, it's downstairs. Uh, but I do like that. Uh, I like that idea of using Pinterest to kind of promote. Um, I <laughs> Gary was like, "Your check is in the mail." Um, yeah. So I I. Ken, I, was there anything we didn't kind of hit on the topic of like sort of book promotion or anything like that? Uh, no, uh, uh, I mean, uh, nothing I can add. Uh, I will have, you know, once I've been out there a year, I'll have uh, hopefully some, some greater insights and I'll certainly, uh, you know, certainly part of the, the, the weekly chore is to find out ways to get to, uh, uh, find out more ways to, to get the word out. So, uh, speaking of getting the word out, I mean, just what we were talking about with Gary's book, because we kind of pushed that out because I mean, word of mouth is a huge thing. I mean, and, and that's why earlier Josh was talking about, you know, going on podcasts and things like that. And, um, because you kind of got this captive audience when you're, when you're listening to a podcast and they're like, Oh, this, even if, you know, even if maybe the person isn't familiar with the, the um, subject matter, or whatever, maybe they find the author or whatever interesting that I might check this out. And, you know, if you can get people talking about your book, so I mean, obviously get in front of people who care about whatever your subject subject matter of your book is. And if you can get them talking, you know. Mm -hmm. I think um, I'm, I'm also like, I, I personally like one thing, Ken, um, that you've excelled at is like you, you are. Um, really good at finding different areas to market in and also 
I do find it really interesting, like the awards and stuff that you've accrued and uh, also just sort of um, having to kind of remind myself that that's part of the process as well as like submitting for those awards and stuff. So it's like one thing I have to do this week, there's one coming up and then there's a couple that I'm going to be trying to enter into and who knows, I mean, it may not work out, but those things can bring some publicity too if if you do are fortunate enough to get them you know i think yeah, i think uh you should definitely try the uh the uh, wishing shelf awards uh by uh billy bob buttons a uh, uk uh children's author but uh they were great in that even though as a finalist uh they put a review on my um on my book uh, at goodreads and at amazon and uh, you know, I've I've won awards that didn't go to the trouble to do that. So so that was it was really nice. And they gave me a, a feedback sheet from the seventeen reviewers. They say you know, thirteen thought it was strong here, and uh, and fourteen like this, and and uh, and you know, twelve would uh, definitely buy a, another book by this author. And so so they they gave me some really nice uh, breakdowns among their their reviewing staff. So. That's awesome. That's extremely helpful too for like future work, and um, I think I think that's great. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm curious to kind of see wh what directions to go in next. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting thing. But I do think for anyone out there who hasn't tried this, and if you have like a first book, it's like. I think the biggest piece of advice I think Ken would probably agree with on this too is like the weird mystery of it is you just kind of do it <laughs> and, and you like, like even with the promotion stuff, it's like there are certain avenues you can take, but I think half of it is just kind of doing the hunt and, and trying to get the word out. And then it, it, it's this weird kind of karma thing that happens where it like actually works um sometimes and at least that's what i've found like i've been baffled every time like a newspaper is like yeah we'll write about you i'm like oh, okay so this does work because it's very disheartening when you're doing it that was a really nice write-up by the way you got uh you got what was it two weeks ago um, yeah really good write-up yeah i was stoked about it but like like once again it's it's funny because if you saw the amount of press releases i sent out it's like the, it 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 well, and you've been through this, but it's like, you know, when you're sending these things out, it's like you, you can get very demoralized and feel like you're sort of sending things out into this void. But then what's weird is like a week or a couple days into the process, you start getting replies and you're like, oh, like this thing works, which is crazy. It shouldn't work. It kind of, um, but, but yeah, so I, I definitely want to say like for anybody who's who hasn't done it just like half the thing is just just doing the work like which is why i think all all three of us like you know we're talking about struggling with doing that effectively because it's like it's hard to juggle that on top of like i want to make the next thing <laughs> you know yeah um cool so um so cage birds, like if any, if anybody's out there and especially if you guys picked up Caravaggio, A Light Before the Darkness, if you haven't, you should go pick that up as well. Um, cage birds issue one is out issue two just got released and, uh, and both are excellent books. Um, I will warn like both books are not friendly for children. So I wouldn't have like, my seven-year-old read them, <laughs> but I will say they're they're um, good examples of like adult literature and in comics. And I, I think um, like if you guys like my work, you'll like Ken's work. If, you know that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Uh, was there anything else, like Scott? Anything you wanted to ask before we? Not that I can think of. I think we kind of danced around a lot of different things. I mean, there's always more as far as marketing you can get into and marketing ideas and things. I think I think we kind of touched on a lot of different areas. So hopefully there's a, quite a bit of value in that for the listeners. Yeah, I hope so. Um, 
so so yeah so check out cage birds um is there anything ken before we go or we're all good on uh, I, think, I think we're good so uh cool so uh, let's hope the rest of uh 2021 is considerably uh, uh <laughs> considerably nicer <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if the next time we have this podcast, we're not able to say anything negative about the right um, <laughs> how things didn't go well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll the, the, be the bunker cast. Uh. <laughs> it, 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 the next uh, art cast will be like, um, you know, traveling around in the back of a van with our like pirate radio station. And be like, <laughs> we're going to talk about art despite what the man wants us to talk about. <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's possible um yeah but uh anyhow so i appreciate you coming on ken uh once more um where can everybody find your work and check out your stuff already uh bella fay the f uh the fay is fe so bella fay media.com uh you can search for uh caravaggio a light uh, rather than type out the whole word uh, on uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, KenMora.com, and uh, yeah, uh, subscribe to my newsletter. I won't inundate you with uh, stuff, but I will let you know when I have Kickstarters going. Exciting. Um, all right, and uh, yeah, definitely check out Ken's site too because there's just a ton of awesome work and uh, stuff that's not just comics too, like animation too. So. Um, uh, I love it. Um, okay, Scott, where can everybody find your work and where can they get in it? Wait, wait a second. Go you forgot yourself, Josh. Come on, man. I wanted to know where you got. Don't be shy. You've got something to promote. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, so speaking of books and comics and graphic novels, uh, two stories, um, book one, uh, my comic about faith and mental illness, um, uh, that, I uh, hand letter, hand ink, and hand to you now in print uh, is available to order at most websites, but I'd prefer if you kind of get it from Amazon because that helps the ranking and that algorithm that we're all fighting. Um, so go check that out. Um, and then joshuakemble.com, and that'll link you to everywhere, like my Instagram and stuff where I post pages when I get them done. Scott, where can people find that? exquisite t-shirt that you are wearing well i hate to you know i hate to promote amazon that much but it's kind of it, you gotta it's kind of <laughs> you gotta sometimes you just gotta um kind of bow down to your supreme overlord so my stuff on amazon too so i've got i've got this t-shirt young and the dead it's basically what it costs me to print um i think this this one's a premium so i think it's around 14 15 dollars but there's also uh there's one that's just it's 1350 for just the standard tea uh there's this one's got yellow and different color t-shirts and i've got a white logo and a black logo um they're available at amazon slash shop slash circworks or i think josh put a link in the description go check that out because that will help me get into the next tier which means i can upload more shirts and hopefully start making more sales because amazon uh, when you sell shirts through there, they kind of tear you up in this system. So uh, that's what I'm doing. The other thing I forgot to mention is that uh, now I got two new tiers on my Patreon. Um, I've got a private mentorship and a group mentorship. Um, so I just basically launched those a couple days ago. So if you are interested in having me to uh, help you with your creative projects or whatever, that is available now. So yeah, that's what I got going on. So the private. Mentorship isn't like an OnlyFans kind of situation, Scott. <laughs> okay. What's uh, wait? What's OnlyFans? That's is that like the uh, adult thing or something? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. Not that. I'd probably be making a lot more money if I was. Well, if it, not me, but like if I was doing sexy pinups or something like that. But no, I'm not doing that. So. <laughs> I, uh, I, I encourage that though because uh, Scott has been doing illustration and graphic design and cartooning for a really long period of time and has worked in multiple industries and now runs his own like company and uh, like basically is like running his own show. And so like if you're an illustrator or designer who wants to get into the industry or like needs mentorship, like nobody better than Scott, honestly. Um, so yeah, 
there's an endorsement there. <laughs> I don't know nobody better, but I, I still think it's, I think, it's, I think I can, yeah, I think I can do a good job of that. I don't I know if so. I can do better than anybody, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, also what Josh was mentioning was the, uh, this show, the art casters, we do the show every single week. Uh, it bounces back and forth from Josh's channel to my channel. We, it's usually Josh and myself. And then we always have a special guest this week. It's Ken next week. It'll be somebody else. But like I said, it goes back and forth from Josh's channel. But if you want to know what channel we're going to be on, what day we're going to be on, who our guest is going to be, the best way to do that is join our mailing list. We don't spam you or anything like that. Usually about 30 minutes before we go live, we'll send out an email and we'll let you know all that information. So you can click on it. And so you can find us because unfortunately YouTube doesn't always alert people. Even if you hit the bell, even if you subscribe, even if you do all that stuff. So, I love it. Um, all right. Uh, thank you guys again and go get, uh, Oh, a uh, link in the chats to, for, or in the show notes to, um, cage birds. So go buy that as well. All right. See you guys. We'll see you later. later. Bye.